But biologically inspired materials and structures, um, a couple of pictures here. This is the research groups. Many of them are here <coughs> today. Um, and they do all the fantastic work, students, postdocs, and visitors, and so forth. And um, we are interested in um, designing better materials. And we do this because we have many examples of materials that break and fail, like uh, here the structures in an earthquake. So we're trying to get better materials that are stronger, more resilient, more durable. Um, another example here that you might see when you drive home tonight, um, you're going to see a lot of um, uh, structures that are breaking down because of environmental influences, um, and they break. And so we're trying to see what we can do in ba making better materials that are more resilient, um, that withstand these extreme pressures better. Um, and so maybe we can think about things like these here. Um, so building these bridges of the future, structures of the future, we need um, new materials. So it, these are critical steps in, um, in building these, these new kinds of designs out there. Um, and we take a lot of inspiration from spiders. So you've probably seen some of the spiders in our labs in the basement or in, in uh, the offices in Building One. If you haven't seen them, um, take a look. Um, so we have all sorts of spiders that build these webs. This is a two-dimensional web. We're interested in understanding the, the structure. We're understanding the material, how they're made. Um, these are three-dimensional webs that we're recently creating, or the spiders are building them, actually. Um, so these are uh, webs actually built by by multiple spiders, social spiders and semi-social spiders. So they're not just one spiders um, that build this, but multiple spiders that build a house or city or, or environment together. Um, and then, of course, there are other kinds of silk-based materials like cocoons, right, that you've, you've seen. So there's a whole range of structures and materials based on, <clears throat> based on silk that we're quite excited about. And what really is driving these materials, uh, the interest in these materials, is that they're very resilient, they're very strong. So spider silk actually um, is as strong as steel. Uh, it's much tougher because you can extend it much longer. And one of the features in this material is it has these multiple levels of hierarchy from the molecular scale, the proteins, or the chemistry. So we like to connect chemistry with structural engineering across these different hierarchy levels and try to make sense of how this works. Um, very complicated, but very exciting. And maybe the solution to some of those big problems out there and preventing corrosion and fracture and so forth. There are many other materials we like to study. This is a material, um, it's, a, it's a worm that lives in the ocean um, and it has these teeth that are very, very strong and tough, uh, but they com consist purely of protein and metal ions. So we're trying to understand how these species can actually make these teeth that are so strong and tough. And so there's a whole many different types of materials. We interested in these adhesives, uh, muscles. So they um, provide these material classes and platforms for um, very effective underwater adhesives in the ocean, um, how they work. Um, there are surfaces we find in nature. Um, like this famous example here. So all of these are based on these kind of um, very um, interesting structures that would appear at multiple scales from the chemistry all the way up to the structural scale of things you can see. So what you see here is not all that's there. Right? So there's a lot more under uh, within the structure. And so we're trying to see really how, and as engineers, we're trying to predict and understand how these uh, materials can be so different functionally. Um, so they can be glues, adhesives, they can be uh, strong as steel, they can be um, uh, surface repellents, um, but they're all made from the same basic material, which is protein. Many of these materials I've shown are protein materials. And so we're trying to understand how nature is able to engineer these very different functions from the same chemical stuff. And that's the dream of engineers, is to make anything out of the one, the same thing, the same base kind of material. And so that's what drives this. So we're developing theories for this um, to, um, to understand how these, the key, the secret to this, of course, is, are these multiple structures. And so what engineers typically do is they look at one scale, sort of macro scale structure, uh, we've expanded this idea and, and have um, begun to engineer materials at multiple structures from the nano scale, meso scale, micro scale, all the way to the macro scale. And if you sort of imagine each scale here, um, okay, um, <laughs> that's not supposed to be on the slide here. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so each scale, each scale is a little knob you can turn and create function, and you can create multiple functions by turning multiple knobs simultaneously, and you create a network of interactions, almost like the one on the left here, and uh, there are synergies, there are resonances that are created. So you can create very interesting functional properties um, by doing this. Um, and so this is sort of the, the picture um, is um, we're expanding the scale of traditionally what we think about structural engineering all the way down to these nanoscales. Um, we're building things. So this here, uh, we, we not only imagine these things, we actually develop the prototypes and, and synthesize these processes in the lab. So this is the spider's way of making stuff. Um, this is a, um, a 3D printer that we're building here at MIT that mimics um, the spider processing. It's microfluidic, so it's a connection to some of the work I presented earlier. 
and we can make synthetic spider webs. We can also make um, composites using 3D printers. So what you see here are ideas on how we're uh, 3D printing in micro scale. I'm going to try until the thing comes up, okay? <laughs> so uh, uh, so we're 3D printing and um, these materials actually now, I have way too many slides, bad example, um, allow us to go away from what you see um, Okay, somebody's uploading something on my Dropbox. Um, uh, sort of creating these materials that prevent stress concentration. So that's what most engineering materials have is a stress concentration, they fracture. Um, the materials we've made actually don't have that anymore. So this is the traditional material, these composites prevent these stress concentrations from happening. And um, so a lot of these things come from spiders and other natural systems. So, okay, thank you. Let me choose the. Questions? Oh yeah, out of time anyway. Yes, here we go. Um, so, so, I, so I've seen a, a couple of documentaries on people making 3D printers. Uh, yep. And I always wonder how much work it is to uh, build a 3D printer from scratch on your own. Um, actually, you can ask um, my research scientist, uh, Zhao Chen, who's, I don't know if he's in the audience here, he built it. So um, depends on the, the one you've seen here is actually, he, he really built it from scratch in his, in his office. Um, and it uh, probably took him about a few months to a year. Um, but the, the, some of the key elements in this, the microfluidic technology and actually taking the protein and making it into a fiber, that took us multiple years and that's sort of the print hat. And that's actually the really, really hard part in, in creating this. And then there's also the protein engineering. So we need to um, have the right ink. So we can't buy them at the, yeah. online at Amazon. We need to, we make our own inks for silk inks, and so we use, uh, we engineer the protein, the bee, in a very particular way uh, to create strong fibers or robust fibers and so forth. So a lot of the work goes into the inks and the microfluidics and then the printers. Um, but yeah, if you want to buy, uh, you can buy these printers actually as kits, and you can, if you print polymers, it's easy, and you can print them within a couple of days, I think. Yeah. So by the way, some of these projects, we have some MNG students working on uh, some of the 3D printing and uh, some of the web structures. And so there's a lot of ways of for students to get involved and doing some hands-on things. So if you're interested, I'm not sure, I think you're a postdoc, probably. No, student, okay. PhD, yeah. Yeah, if you're interested in doing some, uh, actually, we also have jobs for feeding the spiders. We, since we, I, we have, so one of the, one of the, in the capstone project this year, we have, uh, one of the students is actually, his job is to feed the spiders. Um, because they need to be fed. So they build these three-dimensional webs. And um, so it's, it's, it's quite, yeah, so there's a lot of things involved in, the, in, the, in doing this, including feeding the animals. And um, so, so you, could, you could have a part-time job if you want in, this, it's in the summer. Um, okay, good, thank you.